Hi, it's Kim and today I'm doing a process video for a 12 by 12 inch layout using Uniquely Creative Team Spirit. Um, so what I've got here is the dark grey pattern paper from that collection and I am adding a layer of gesso which is going to sit behind where I'll put my photo cluster. So I'm just putting that on with a palette knife roughly so it's um, pretty distressed but it's just going to create a... A focal point in the background for where the most of the well where the photos and most of the embellishments will be and I'm just drying that off with the heat gun and now I'm going to use a stencil and some modeling paste uh, to create another design over that gessoed area this is a Stamperia um, stencil it's also available from embellish it so teen spirit i'm doing this layout with teen spirit for embellish it my local scrapbooking shop so just this is the um finnabar prima finnabar modeling paste and i like it it gives a really nice crisp um, outline through the stencil and this stencil is one of my absolute favorite stencils now while that modeling paste is wet I'm sprinkling over it the Tim Holtz um, embossing powder so this is the distressed embossing powder and it's in selvage patina which I always want to call savaged patina, but it's not savaged, it's selvaged. Um, and because the modelling paste is wet, the embossing powder will stick to it. And then when you heat it to set the embossing powder, that obviously also dries the modelling paste, and you'll end up with a very dimensional effect with your modelling paste. Um, and so it won't be, it won't dry flat against the background. It will have a very distinct um, ridge underneath it and I really like the effect it gives. Now the those particular distressed embossing powders can be um, transparent or um, translucent. You can see through them to an effect so they're not totally transparent but when you put them over the modeling paste because the modeling paste is is white solid white um, it does give a more solid effect to those embossing powders and you saw me there scratching off the modeling paste yeah don't don't leave the modeling paste on your stencils and your palette knives because then you have to scratch it all off with baby wipes because it dries fast especially when you've got a heat gun running next to it so that did take me a bit of time which I cut out of the video to um, get all of that off my stencil and palette knife uh, so now I'm just using some of the pattern papers from this collection to create some mats behind my photo and I'm just distressing those with my trusty old Heidi Swap distressing tool and they will sit offset behind the photo. And I am using the Kitty's Craft Foam that I like to use to give dimension to that photo, to that to the photo and the mats. The glue that I use is Art Glitter Glue, uh, which is also available at Embellish It. I really like it because it dries completely clear and there's no tack or anything to it once it's dry. One thing when you're sticking over embossing powder and gesso is you need to really make sure you've got a strong adhesive because it can be quite difficult to get stuff to stick to that um, media. Now the the orange pieces there that I'm just sticking down, they are made with a die from this collection, which is like a distressed grid sort of die. And I really, really like this. So I just cut it in half and then put half above and half below the photo. And now I'm putting pressure on the photo just to make sure that it attaches or grabs to that gesso slash embossing powder background and I cut a bit out but I did actually hold my hand there for quite some time to make sure that that photo did grab. Now the besties that you can see there on the photo as part of the title is actually a word a die word from the collection or available through Uniquely Creative that says bestie. I wanted it to be besties because it's my son and his three best mates but I end up changing that again um, when I before I finalised the title. So I cut the S out of another word that was in that set of dies and I was just going to join it on to create besties. 
um, but you'll see that I do change that. So I've added um, some circles from the ephemera pieces that come with that collection. And there's also a little tab at the top. And now I'm adding some chipboard words. These are Dusty Attic hashtag chipboard words, which are also available from Embellish It. Uh, really good for teenage or kids layouts, uh, particularly teenagers because of the hashtag. Um, and so I'm just having a play around with those, but there is a word hashtag friends in, in the three words that I've picked out. And so I'm going to change it to now say best friends, which I think works really well. So the boys were all dressed up with their Spider-Man masks and they were off to see the latest Spider-Man movie. And they went to the $2 shop and bought some Spider-Man masks, which they wore into the movie theater. And so the other um, chipboard words, I'm just playing about where I'm going to put those along with some other tags, which I cut out from one of the cut apart sheets in that collection. And I've got a few more um, of the ephemera pieces. I'm just sticking down with glue, a combination of glue. So some of the pieces are just flat adhered. And then some of the pieces have been popped up with the craft foam. As I said, that's kitty craft foam. It's adhesive on one side. And then on the other side, I simply add wet glue. Um, it's a nice light way of giving dimension onto your projects. You can also use foam tape or pieces of off cut chipboard to give you that dimension. Um, you don't have to add lots and lots of dimension to get a good effect, but a little bit can be extremely effective on your layouts to make them more interesting. Um, and ha because of the shadows that the um, popped up pieces add, um, to your project. So I'm just popping up a, the last couple of strips and there I'm looking where my chipboard words are going to go. And then I decide that I'm going to use the Prima waxes to color those chipboard pieces. So the waxes work really well on the chipboard. Um, and once they dry, they don't come off or rub off or create a mess or anything. And it doesn't take that long for them to dry. If you get bits of the wax in the intricate pieces of the chipboard, you can just use a craft knife to scratch that out. So I've used Firebird. Um, I think it's Firebird. It's the most beautiful coppery orange color. I absolutely love it. Really good for boy layouts. Such a beautiful color. It's my absolute favorite and you'll see it in the close-up photos. So I've also used that same color on the die cut word, the best. And so the title is in that nice bright orange with best friends. Um, once I had done all of the words in orange, I decided that the title didn't actually stand out enough with the other pieces also being done in the orange. So I end up deciding that the other words that aren't part of the title, I'm going to use a dark gray wax over the orange. So I am just um, sticking down my title and then I, you can see that I've got um, the other chipboard sitting there that I haven't stuck down yet. And I am going to find my other waxes. I was tossing up about doing it in a patina type green color, which is very similar to the embossing powder I'd used, but I decided I preferred the dark gray, which I think is the graphite color in the waxes. And what I've done is put it over the orange so that you can still see little bits of the orange along with this graphite dark gray color. So I've just done that with one of the words. And then the second word, I haven't yet uh, put the orange on. So I'll put the orange on it and then uh, put the gray over it. And you don't have to wait for the orange to set or anything like that. You can just put the second color straight over the top and... Um, as long as that orange has been rubbed in well to the chipboard, it's not going to blend with the grey to create a third colour or anything like that. So you can see that I've put the orange on and I'm putting the grey straight over the top of it and that's fine. And then I shall just glue the chipboard down with the art glitter glue. And I find that glue works really well for sticking just about everything. The only time I change to a different wet glue is if I'm sticking down really chunky flowers or something because then I move to the Stamperia. There's a really um, strong glue in the Stamperia glues and I use that when I'm sticking down chunky flowers. 
but for most items, the art glitter glue works really well. So you can see there that sticking the grey chipboard words on, they don't stand out as much as the orange in the title. So that leaves the focus to the title, which is exactly how it should be. Um, I'm sticking down another die cut lightning bolt there. Then I decided I needed um, a little bit more added. So I'm going to punch out with a small star punch some stamps. So that punch is just an old punch from my stash. And I'm just going to glue down those stars. And then I decided that I needed something in the top right hand corner to balance the photo and embellishment cluster. And so I'm just cutting out some more pieces from the cutter pouch part sheet. Now this video is going to come to an end shortly. I ran out of storage space on my phone and I didn't realize, but the only other thing I'm going to do is fussy cut out this word boom and then it's going to go up the top with the um, in that top right hand corner cluster and you'll be able to see those in the close-up photos. So thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I would really appreciate if you press like. It makes a big difference to me with how my video is presented by YouTube. And if you could leave a comment, I'd love it and I will respond to you. If you have any questions or any suggestions, I'd love to hear from you. Um, otherwise, I look forward to talking to you again shortly. Thank you. Bye.